It's that time of year again, where we decide which case manufacturers deserve our praise and a GN teardown crystal, and which deserve eternal shame and have to pay $19.99 for their own on store.cameraxis.net. Last year, the Lian Li 11 Dynamic took the prize for best all around, and the Silverstone PMO2 and Fractal Define S2 took home the best worst trend for the unforgivable sin of being pointless refreshes. Also, the PMO2 is just a bad case. This year's award nominees pick up from where we left off, starting with the lackluster Thermal Tank Level 20 MT in December of 2018 and ending in November of 2019. Let's take a look through the best cases for 2019. If any of these interest you, there will be links in the description below, and we also have separate full reviews of all of these cases on the channel. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the GN Store. Although the companies have to earn their awards to get them, you can buy your own GN Teardown Crystal at store.gamersnexus.net. We also recently restocked our Blueprint Heather True Royal t-shirts, Anniversary Edition Teal Logo Cotton shirts, and the large mod mats are also in stock and shipping now. If you want to support our work over the past year, head to store.gamersnexus.net. And additionally, we're working with Eden Reforestation Projects through November to plant 10 trees for each item sold on the store. Click the link in the description below. As always with these roundups and end of year best of awards, we're not doing a heavy focus on data. Instead, we're focusing on the bigger picture of what should you actually buy now that all of the data has been collected for the year. If you're interested in all the data for any individual case, maybe you're really excited about one of them, you can check out the review for whatever that may be, and it'll have everything there. Uh, additionally, if you're new here, knowing our testing methodology, which is explained on the site, uh, gamersnexus.net, in some of our case reviews, that's important because otherwise you can look at the numbers and they won't, you, you'll take away the wrong thing. So make sure you understand that aspect as well if you're using the charts for anything. Anyway. There's a lot to talk about here. Patrick wrote up his thoughts on the best cases, and I've added some of my own. And then we also have the worst trends category at the end. Technically, the best worst trends, because you need to pick the superlative version. Well, I guess you get the idea. Let's get into the roundup. We'll start off with this year's overall winner. The best overall award, the most coveted award, goes to Fantex for its $90 P400A enclosure. Our review and thermal measurements focused on the digital version of the case with a mesh front panel and three RGB intake fans. It's not hard for a mesh-fronted case to excel in the thermal category, but the P400A in particular uses a fine metal mesh rather than having an extra filter layer to catch all the dust. Thermal performance with the Digital's three intake fans, its price considered as well, and the mesh front panel are what make the P400A our winner, as on the inside, it's an inexpensive steel chassis that Fantex has used in multiple products. It's nothing new. It's not at all exciting. But at the same time, reusing that chassis is part of what makes the P400A so cheap relative to some of its competition. In the instance of this case, just like in real life, it's the outside that matters. In our exhaustive review of the P400A Digital, we found that performance was functionally equivalent with both white and black front panels, debunking some of the earlier theories that the paint might inhibit airflow, so feel free to buy either one. We also found that CPU thermal improvement from panelist results had minimal gain over the stock performance, and this is good. Provided sufficient static pressure, the P400A does excellently while maintaining a mesh that is fine enough to stop a good deal of dust. We'll talk more later about the case's thermals in our best out of the box thermal section, but we can cover some build quality notes now. The P400A is one of the most basic cases possible, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The case offers about 2.5 centimeters of clearance between the motherboard tray and the steel side panel, including built in Velcro straps for cable management with greater depth. The P400A can also fit EATX motherboards as it lacks a cable management bar, although you'd face some cable routing restrictions in such a configuration. We also appreciate small features, like the external physical button controls for LEDs, rather than forcing reliance on software that nobody wants. Construction is overall thin and nothing special, but it's heavily vented, and that's a major upside. We'll talk more about the Fantex P400A in a few moments, but let's first cover some cases that were even better in specific targeted areas. The next award is for Best Mechanical Design, which we're granting to Lian Li for its $200 O11 Dynamic XL. We went back and forth on this particular award. The O11 XL is an iteration on a case that was last year's best all-around winner, the O11 Dynamic, and is still one of the best cases on the market. And the XL has some cool new features, but one of our most memorable interactions with the case was snapping the fragile plastic tabs that secure a fan tray on the bottom of the case. That's not a plus in the mechanical design category, obviously, but it's outweighed by the other things. The strength of the O11 family's layout is what makes up for this downside and pushes the O11 XL to the top of our list. The over-engineered hot swap hard drive bays, 
the bottom to top airflow, the side intake that allows for a sealed front panel without ruining performance for once, and the flexibility of power supply mounting locations are all excellent features, and the XL's extra size allows Lee and Lee some room to breathe with clearances on radiators and other components. The side intake covers are one of the most flexible parts of the design. They can be used as SSD mounts, removed to allow fan mounting, or radiator mounting, or replaced with an EATX extension for extra motherboard compatibility. The O11XL may not include fans, but it offers a large build canvas that's well suited for both air cooling and open loop cooling. This case uses thicker paneling for a sturdier build, it uses hot swap drive sleds with solid metal handles, and swappable power supply and hard drive cage positioning are also afforded. A panel design that manages to offer security while still eliminating screws, as compared to traditional cases, is another one of the O11 family's strong points. This is a larger version of Lee Lee's O11 Dynamic from last year, and it's well deserving of the Best Mechanical Design Award. And as for the O11 Dynamic, it doesn't fall into this video because it's not a 2019 case, but if you're looking for a really good case at about $100, $130 or so, the O11 Dynamic still gets one of our highest recommendations, though you will need to buy some fans with it. And it's great for air and liquid cooling setups. Our next award is for Best Budget Case, which we're assigning to the Cooler Master NR600. Although the combination of its name and look make it completely forgettable, the Cooler Master NR600 remains one of the better built cases in its price category at $60 to $70. The case ticks the boxes, but also implements the ultra fine mesh that got the Fantex P400A to the top of the charts, and the NR600 also has tempered glass, a mesh front, and all the basic requirements for a budget gaming PC in the modern era. This is the kind of case that Walmart should have been using for its DTW series but then it'd be not completely terrible, so it probably didn't really fit the spec sheet. The NR600's fine mesh acts as a combinatory dust filter and air inlet, opting out of a secondary dust filter to instead maximize the cooling capabilities. The case has some shortcomings, like its limited 140mm fan support, despite the presence of mounting holes for said fans, but its sacrifices are overall outweighed by the price and the presence of better features. The case didn't meaningfully gain in our panelist test, illustrating that it's already able to breathe at its maximum potential in the stock configuration. As for the build quality, although there are minor fit and finish issues inside, the case offers a generally standard interior for system building, while still being affordable, but with some of the new exterior features. As an aside, people disagree all the time about what constitutes budget, and you'll probably see that in the comments of this video. Our definition is simple. It has to still be an actually good case, and that's objectively, and it also has to be in the $50 to $70 price point. This case used to be closer to $60, but tariffs have pushed Cooler Master's prices up in general, and it still falls within our range at the time of writing this content. We didn't test any $50 cases that were new this year that were actually good, so none of those were viable, obviously, because none came across our bench that weren't newer than, well, this year. We have an honorable mention for the best budget case category, and that'll go to the Thermaltake Versa J24. It's more expensive than the NR600, but it comes with three 120mm fans. The main issue is that the front panel is an open grill backed by a dense foam filter, so users can either choose between suboptimal thermals with the foam, or good thermals with practically no filtration and the foam removed. Still, it seems like the 4-fan version is sometimes available for less than $70, which is a pretty good deal for users willing to do some light modding. The next GN award is for Best Out of the Box Thermals, a long-standing viewer favorite meme that's become a reality. The Fantex P400A wins this one, and this section is why the P400A received the Best Overall category, because it was good in general, but also specifically the strongest in Out of the Box Thermals. We broke a long dry spell for Fantex content on Gamers Nexus when we reviewed the Evolve X in October of last year. It received our most overhyped award for 2018. It wasn't a bad case but it was more flash than substance, not the incredible game changer that we'd been led to expect. Imagine our surprise, then, when Fantex unveiled an airflow-oriented version of the P400, a case that we previously mutilated for poor performance. The P400A RGB scored high in performance results across all of our charts. The CPU torture temperature of 48.2 degrees Celsius delta T over ambience for the stock P400A was on par with the Cooler Master H500P mesh and the Silverstone PM01, while the 49.1 degrees Celsius delta T results for GPU thermals fell between the PM01 and the H500M mesh. It's in excellent company in both categories, with only the real heavy hitters like the Half-X and the RL06 reliably outperforming it out of box. In noise normalized thermals where we set competing stock case fans to the same noise level to test efficiency and eliminate brute force performance, the Fantex P400A proved itself a strong competitor. 
The key to its success is a mesh front panel with no additional filtration combined with three 120mm intake fans and the digital RGB version specifically. This isn't a case that will hermetically seal out dust, but it will do a great job of keeping components cool straight out of the box, no additional fans required. If you want a cheaper version, there's the P400A non-digital, but then you'll need to budget for some fan purchases. Fantax has come a long way in the last few years, and we hope to see the company continue to improve its thermal awareness. The next award is for best noise levels, which we're bestowing upon the Fractal Meshify S2. Technically, the best scoring case in our noise chart since the last round of awards is the Thermaltake A500TG. However, we reserve the right to not give awards to cases that aren't good. The A500 only tested well for noise because it's got a sealed front panel, and Thermaltake launched the case with an insane $250 MSRP, which is exactly what it continues to cost today as it sits on warehouse shelves. Instead, this award goes to the Fractal Meshify S2. Our review of the Meshify S2 was subdued in its praise since we'd already seen meshifications and S2ifications from Fractal, and we gave the S2 an award for being a pointless refresh. But the case itself is solid. We don't typically associate mesh-fronted cases with low noise levels. But for Actel's use of relatively slow 1000 RPM dynamic X2 GP14 fans, 140 mils, in combination with the mesh means that little noise is generated while still maintaining acceptable airflow. That, and we haven't reviewed any Be Quiet cases this year to compete with it. We're giving this award for noise levels, not noise suppression. Adding aftermarket fans to the S2 will absolutely make it noisier, but out of the box, it's doing well. Noise normalizing for thermals is a new test that we added just this year, so we don't have test data for a couple of the eligible cases. Still, it's a safe bet that the P400A RGB would win even if we did. It was already at 38.6 dB for the torture tests that it won for best out-of-the-box thermals, and we noise normalized down to 36 dBA. However, Fantex has won enough things already, and we'd like to spread the love and give some deserved recognition to the NZXT H710. During 100% speed torture tests, it was at 39.6 dBA, but slowing it down to hit the 36 dBA threshold had it tied with the P400A RGB in our GPU thermals and about 4 degrees Celsius warmer in CPU delta T over ambient measurements. That's got something to do with the four fans that NZXT stuck in there to make up for their hotbox design, but much like Jay, we digress. We've complained plenty about the way NZXT's thermals are going, and it's important to recognize that noise-normalized thermals are one category where they can still do well. If there's a single good thing about sealing off the front panel and relying on side intake vents, it's that fan noise can't blast the user. The NZXT H710 follows up the H700 design that we previously liked, primarily for its industry-leading build quality at the price point and superior cable management. The noise-normalized performance is a bonus. We really really want to see NDXT try a mesh case, but the company doesn't seem interested. The next award is not actually an award, but it's more of a teaser for something to look forward to in the next couple weeks. The category is called Best Case We're Currently in the Process of Reviewing, and it goes to the Lian Li Lancool 2. If you're asking how many cases we are currently in the process of reviewing, the answer is one. We've gotten a ton of requests to review the Lian Li Lancool 2. Yes, we have the case, and yes, we are in the process of reviewing it. It's different enough from the Landcool 1 that it's already gotten some points just for not being another half-hearted refresh, but we don't want to hand out one of our other awards until we've gotten some hard performance numbers on how it does. It's hard to argue with a $90 case with features like hot swappable drive bays and hinged magnetic doors, but there's still a lot more to look at in the review. Stay tuned for this one. Our final award is for the best worst trend in cases. This time, it's assigned to pointless product segmentation. We also assigned Intel and AMD, one share each, this worst trend award in our CPU roundup for 2019, already published. The case industry has confused itself with its multivarious options now afforded by RGB, ARGB, tempered glass steel, sound damp panels, colors, options, and fan counts. Rather than pick a few SKUs that are objectively good, many of the manufacturers have opted to just make everything and dilute the market with garbage or half good things. The BitPhoenix Nova Mesh is one of the most recent examples of this. Although BitPhoenix addressed our criticisms of the ENSO, sort of, by improving thermal performance and meshifying its cases, the company also split the product into far, far too many variations. Just to be clear, the part of the Nova Mesh we're shaming here isn't the performance, it's the fact that there are so many different, nearly identical case SKUs. This year's worst trend is stuffing digital shelves with as many different versions of the same case as possible. Searching BitPhoenix Nova on Newegg at the time of this writing turns up a whopping 
26 results with separate listings for the original Nova, Nova Acrylic Window, Nova TG, Nova Mesh, Nova, G, Nova Mesh TG, excuse me, Nova Mesh TG RGB, Nova Mesh TG ARGB, Alphabet Soup, as well as separate listings for black or white versions of each case and some third-party retailers. None of these cases we've reviewed are as bad about this as the Nova, but there are plenty of other manufacturers doing this. Even the P400A has a base and a digital version, and is a refresh of the P400, which already had several variants. There has to be a better way to do this, and it might be a more modular approach where a base chassis is sold with upgrade packs for panels available. And that'll recap everything. For the best cases of 2019, Hopefully this helped you out. Again, if you're interested in them, the links are in the description below. We also have the full reviews on the site and on the YouTube channel for, I think, all of these cases. And then the Landcool 2 review will be coming up shortly once we get through Black Friday and Cyber Monday season. Hopefully this helps out. Subscribe for more. Go to store.cameronsaccess.net to help us out directly or to pick up one of your own GN Award Teardown Cubes. And you can also go to patreon.com slash We'll see you all next time.